Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the Suntu MC2 Compass. For those of you who are looking for a compass, uh, either you're a beginner working with compasses or an advanced user, then you want to take, take a look at this one, the MC2. There's three different types of uh, actually this brand of compass. You have a northern hemisphere, a southern hemisphere, and a global MC2. And it just means they're balanced for that particular part of the, uh, the area or the, of the world. So uh, again, this is a very simple, easy to use compass. Uh, I've been using it for about five years now, and I haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. Uh, it works great when utilizing it with a map, and as well as you know, shooting your azimuth and navigation. In the US military, you're issued with the Lensatic compass. It's a great compass, very accurate, but it's a little bit harder to use as far as when it comes to land navigation. And I can't recall how many times when I first went in the Marine Corps, going out on land navigation exercises and literally missing the target altogether. Uh, there's just too many formulas that you have to learn and memorize when it comes to using the, the uh, US Lensatic. Uh, and we always, well, at least what I did, I always had to have my notepad with me with all the different formulas written down where you have to compute uh, your back azimuth, uh, adding your magnetic declination, which is what I always forgot. So when I got retired from the Marine Corps, I wanted to find a compass that I could understand it was simple and easy to use. So I went through about five or six compasses and then I finally settled on the MC2. Uh, it has all the features that I'm looking for. Uh, like I said, it's very easy to, to navigate with this as far as staying on your azimuth. So let's go ahead and take a look at this compass a little more in detail. All right, the first part will be the cover itself. It's in hard plastic. The interior has a mirror with a sighting line going down the center portion. When closed, the cover will protect the bezel ring of the compass. You also have two sights. There's one V-notch sight on the very top and the other V-notch sight down here at the bottom. You have a large opening here at the bottom. When using the mirror as a signaling mirror, you use this opening here. At the top and bottom V-notch sights, you also have a luminous dot. There's one there and another here. And when charged with a flashlight or any other light source, these help uh, aid navigation in low light conditions. Next part is the base plate itself. It is a see-through base plate. It has three scales. On the left side you have one and twenty, and this is broken down into centimeters. One and twenty-four thousand. And this is broken down by tenths of a mile. And the right side you have one and six two five hundred. They have all straight edges on it, and this is for measuring distance on maps. And with the cover in the extended position, it aids in drawing longer lines. You have a magnifying lens for reading small print on maps. And a secondary use of this, you could use it for starting fires. You have two index lines. These are luminescent, so once you charge them with any kind of light source, they'll aid in low light conditions. This one here at the top is for your bearing that you're going to be on your line of march. And you read it here. And the one at the bottom is so you can read what your back azimuth would be. On the back side of the base plate, you have three rubber dots. You have one here, here, and here. And these aid in gripping the compass to a map to keep it from sliding everywhere. Next is the bezel ring. It's marked off in 360 degrees. 
and it's broken down in two degree increments. It has the outer portion with the degrees is in luminous material. And again, once charged with a light source, this will uh, light up and aid in low light conditions. You have cardinal directions on the inner black ring, north, northeast, east, southeast, south, etc. And these aid in general direction. You have a floating magnetic needle. Magnetic north is indicated by the red portion. And it has a luminous dot on it as well. The compass itself is liquid filled. You have on the back portion of it, you have a red orienting arrow. And it's flanked by two luminous dots with lines on it. And nicknames for this you'll hear is uh, Shed, or I like to refer to it as the Dog House. You have orienting lines running on both sides. And these are used to line up on the grid lines on a map when plotting a bearing. You also have a declination, magnetic declination scale on the very bottom. You have it for east magnetic declination and west magnetic declination. The MC2 is also equipped with a clinometer which is used for measuring angles. The black floating arrow here is what's used to measure the angle in the clinometer. All right, on the back of the base plate, on the bezel ring, there's a small brass screw. This is where you would adjust and uh, put your magnetic declination, depending upon where you're at in the world, onto your compass. You have your west declination scale and your east declination scale, and this is for your magnetic declination. So when you get the compass, It'll come with a small little screwdriver, and I'll just attach mine to my pace counter so you don't lose it. And here you have an inverted black arrow with a small black line extending down at the bottom. I'll put a link uh, in the description box for a website where you can go to to figure out what your magnetic declination is in whatever part of the world that you're in. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory but I'll put instructions on there as well how to, how to go about finding that information. But basically, once you put it in there, As you can see, now the small black line is moved to the west, uh, approximately 10 degrees west magnetic declination. So I flip it around. With my compass set on north, zero degrees, I have a adjust it and add it 10 degrees magnetic declination so now that my doghouse the orienting, orienting arrow is now going 10 degrees to the west so now anytime I put an azimuth or bearing on my compass say 20 degrees 
my magnetic declination is already factored into that bearing so there's no chance of me being off target so again no formulas to remember set it and forget it all right just to show you how the orienting lines work when utilizing your compass with a map on the map you have your grid lines your northern grid lines running from south to north so all you want to do you want to pick your location so this is where I'm located at and I want to go to this road junction right here so I align my compass draw that line point A to point B my compass is set on zero degrees so I make sure any time I want to my direction of march I want to rotate so north on the compass is going to north on the map so I simply rotate the compass and I want to make sure that the red orienting lines again as close as possible line up with the north grid lines on the map here you can see the red orienting lines and you can see the black north grid lines on my map and you can see how I've got the orient red orienting lines as close as possible being even with the black grid lines on the map at that point I have my bearing here and my top index line of my direction of march that I'm going to be going in now that I have my bearing which is 61 degrees the only thing I have to do now is put the dog and that's what I refer to dog in the doghouse the red magnetic arrow I consider the dog so I'm going to hold the compass and rotate the compass with my body until I put the dog in the doghouse here you see I've got the red magnetic arrow the dog and I've got it inside the red orienting arrow which is the dog house as long as I keep the dog in the doghouse while I'm out on my line of march I will stay on that 61 degree azimuth I pick a key landmark a large tree a bush a hill to walk towards when I get there I recheck my compass make sure the dog is in the doghouse and I shoot another bearing towards another landmark and continue my line of march and I just repeat that process throughout for a signal mirror, simply face towards the sun, use your fingers as a V-notch, and you simply want to make sure you can catch the glint of the sun. Put the glint, the reflection of the sun, aim it through the V-notch, and aim it towards your target, and then simply go up and down with the reflection to signal your position. So that's my review of the Sunto MC2 Compass. Uh, it's a great compass, lots of features, uh, and comparing with the U.S. military's Lenzatic Compass is no comparison. I mean, there's no formulas that you have to learn and memorize. You know, again, it's, with the magnetic declination, you set it and forget it. So I've had any no issues at all with it. But don't buy a compass. It's with any compass. Buy it not know how to use it and just put it in your bag or put it in your kit because when the time comes down that you need to use it and you don't know how to you're going to be in a world of hurt so definitely learn how to use it practice with it uh, learn how to use it with a com or with a map uh, some of the books that i would recommend that i've used and it's helped me and i get no kickbacks at all from any of these manufacturers uh, this one here is stain found by june fleming Wilderness Navigation by Bob and Mike Burns. And this one's a really good one. This is from Basic Essentials. This is Map and Compass by Cliff Jacobson.
what's really good about this book here, uh, it provides all the information you need on map and compass and how to utilize them, shooting azimuths, etc. But it also has small quizzes in each of the chapters that test your skills and, and let you learn a lot more by doing hands-on. Uh, of course, you want to have a map, a, a, comp or a basic map, doesn't matter, and your compass to work with. And the other one that I use, this is from uh, Dave Canterbury at Pathfinder School. He's got a bunch of pamphlets out. This one's on basic and primitive navigation. It's small, lightweight, waterproof material, something easy you can throw inside of a pack. So again, it, you try to remember as much information as you can, but it's always good to have some backup and if you have to read it. Um, but it's broken down really well. Uh, like here's one portion on for terrain features by use of the hand. But it's really good information. Uh, I'm not sure of the price that I paid for it. But again, I get no kickback from any of these manufacturers. It's just something that uh, I've used to gain knowledge and insight on how to use a map and compass. So again, great compass for the beginner as well as for the advanced user. So take a look at it, see if it fits your bill. So if you've got any comments, please leave them. Uh, like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care and God bless.